Welcome back to Malta Archery. Frequently asked question, uh, last time I showed you how to train the clear thumb release and we shot through this metal frame, which I will show you later again. And then the question appeared, so how can you really train a good thumb release? First of all, it always depends on which lock you use. When you wrap your fingers, too tight around the thumb or your finger too tight around the thumb it's always harder to get a clear release because I have now two finger lock what you use for heavy bows When you lock too hard, it's like when you shoot three fingers and you don't only shoot with your fingers in the first groove. When you do like this, then of course the string is moving until your fingers come out. And the same here when you have too many fingers around and everything is too tight. When you let go, might deflect the arrow. So that's why when you have your, let's say, one finger lock, index finger locks the thumb, keep it as gentle as possible and then simply <laughs> don't force it, don't force to open your fingers, simply let the string do the job. See, only, only let go. Don't don't do too much. Of course, I prefer to shoot um, this Chinese way. I lock my thumb on this joint of the middle finger or slightly underneath. And the index finger does not lock at all. It simply points down. My lock is this. And with this, for me, it's way easier to get a crisp and clear release as when I wrap my finger too hard around the thumb. So my way of shooting looks like this. See, then there's only this slight movement. The thumb is locked on the middle finger, index finger points down. feels for me way better. So it does not matter which bow you shoot. Before I shot the C1 from Ali bow, 32, 33 inch throw. Now I shoot uh, Ottoman style from Akosh bow. They are really nice. Only 30 inches and these are all 29. So I draw now 29 inches. Uh, again, what was said before, don't lock too much. Don't curl your index finger complete around the thumb and then it needs a lot of weight and not a lot of movement. Especially when you shoot with a thumb ring, make sure that you only bend your thumb that far back that the string just sits on the thumb ring or behind the thumb ring. Don't bend your thumb too far back to lock the string. I overdo it now to show you. So the thumb is only in an angle that you can hold the string or even with a thumb ring then. So don't do this that the thumb already points backwards or the thumb ring points backwards and shoot because then again a lot of movement. This is one thing. But the other thing I wanted to talk about is your structure. You need to distribute or to, to split the force. 50% pushing forward and 50% pulling backwards. And when you do this properly, when you practice long enough with, of course, your back tension, shoulders down, and with your back tension, when you balance this pushing and pulling. Then you have this
moment of, of being balanced, then it might work better with every kind of release and not like I only push but my left hand is weak. And then everything starts shaking again. So for me, for a good release, always first the structure. Shoulders down and balanced. You push and you pull in the same way and at full draw you reach this balanced state. For me, it works like this the best. Everything is balanced. This is this moment of pushing, pulling. Then you let go and the arrows directly fly straight. You can already see it, but we go back to this test with the metal frame in a second. So first thing always, don't grab here too tight anything. If you have this finger lock, I will do a video about all these numbers and finger locks maybe soon. Lock your thumb with your index finger, but not too tight, only like this. Then the release works already. And the second thing, second thing, push, pull, until you have this balance, and then let go. So always make sure shoulders are down and you really push forward and you pull back with the same amount of force. Then you use your complete structure and even your bones to make this happen. And then it feels, it feels already way better. So not too tight, but I shoot now my way of locking thumb on my middle finger. The index finger is relaxed. The index finger has no locking uh, function. The index finger only applies a little pressure to the arrow. That the arrow doesn't fall off. And then balance. And let go. And it works wonderfully. It's metal frame. And then your uh, focus, of course, not working. There is a metal frame. Now we shoot through it when you hear the arrow bouncing somewhere, then maybe because the arrow was flying like this or sideways or whatever. So let's give it a few shots. So now when you practice start short distance and simply shoot through something, can be a ring, can be a squarish thingy, it doesn't matter, you come to full draw, make sure your lock is proper, your weight is distributed properly. This is not how it was supposed to work. So there was definitely something wrong with the release. And of course you make sure that spine and draw weight and everything works together. So we try it one more time. Easy. So that was a clean, crisp release. The arrow flew straight through this frame again. See? And this is how it works. This and then when you hear something, okay, that was too crisp too. Let me see if I can shoot bad. No, it does not work now, but you saw it in the first one. When you touch the frame, then your release is still not clear. And again, work on the tension here of your lock and more work on this push and pull, balance these two forces. When you do here too much and the bow is too weak, and you have here a movement, when the bow is strong and you don't come back completely and use your back tension, then this hand is moving. And of course, when you stand in full draw, whatever draw you have, you never flip your hand away from your face. So if you want to do whatever draw you use, when you shoot Mediterrane, Bring the hand straight back, thumb release, back. So, and it's, it's when you have your back tension proper, then it's a natural movement that your hand. So, 
Now you see I have a piece of paper in this metal frame and usually they use it for a bear shaft test that you see if the spine works with the bow. But even for your release you can use this. And okay. Maybe you need a bit more cardboardish stuff like this. So. See, was almost, I don't know if the focus works now, but almost a clean cut a little sideways still. So we put it in again and we do it again. Maybe you have to make it a bit more tight or something, but you figure out something by yourself. So, again. Not too tight with your fingers. And then balance the weight, push, pull. There was a slight sound. I don't like that, but because of the paper coming up. Second shot, again, a little sideways. So, and then you see, you simply practice this always until you have a nice straight pole. I shoot now with the Turkish pole, and you need to fix this paper. It doesn't work like this. Of course, it's Ottoman style. This shot here was a little sideways too, so even I need to work on my release. So, but this is my idea how to train and practice a crisp release. So first of all, don't make your fingers too tight, don't lock too tight here something. Always keep the phoenix eye in mind, never squish your fingers together, always open these two. And then don't lock here too hard. And when you see Arab archery mentioned a lot of different ways of putting the fingers there, or Gao Yin mentioned this one and a half fingers on the thumbnail. So you have this not two fingers on it for heavy bows, and not only one finger, because then maybe the bow is too heavy. So you use one and a half fingers, and this will give you even a nice and crisp release, but simply practice different ways of holding. I prefer to have this as my lock and the index finger points straight down and only applies pressure to the arrow so the arrow doesn't fall off. And when I let go, see, this is all the movement I have. I only open the thumb and the index goes away because there is no pressure on the index finger. When you lock here, and both have to open. It might be a little tricky, but this is how you can practice it. Start short distance and you will get there. Thank you.